Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Daniel and welcome to my channel. I'm so very glad that all of you wonderful, beautiful people are here today. And in today's very special video, I'm going to be talking about a newer book that I'm very excited about. There's a reason that this is the first book that I'm reviewing in 2022. If you watched my 2022 reading list, it was on that list and I already said about how excited I am, but to cut to the chase, it is, Is Atheism Dead by Eric Metaxas. If you guys are new to this channel, I just want to emphasize that I in no way attempt to summarize every detail of the books that I'm reviewing. I'm just trying to give a brief overview of books so that you can decide whether or not this is a book that you want to read in the future. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to talk about the brief outline of Is Atheism Dead by Eric Metaxas, and then I'm going to be talking about why I enjoyed reading this book, what I particularly like about the way that Eric Metaxas writes, and then I'm going to leave it up to you, the viewer, to decide whether or not this is a book that interests you, and if this is something that you want to get in the future, because I'm always encouraging all of my viewers to read more books, whether it's a book on this channel or somebody else's channel, a book that you run into at the bookstore, reading I think is an essential part of growing as an individual. Now before I jump into the summary of this book, I just want to remind all of you wonderful people to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. I'm going to be putting out a lot more videos in 2022, so stay tuned for more absolutely exciting book reviews. I already have a list of books that I'm reading in 2022, and that video you can find at this link above. If you're interested in seeing what books I'm reading in 2022, go ahead and follow that. But now that you've smashed that like button and that subscribe button, let's get into the review of Is Atheism Dead by Eric Metaxas. So to start things off, let's cover the origin of the title, Is Atheism Dead? So in the 60s, Time Magazine had a very bold question plastered on the front of its cover page. And that question was, is God dead? In a world where atheism has been growing in popularity, the idea of rejecting God has been growing in popularity. That was certainly the question of the era. Is God dead? Now, Eric Metaxas in his new book, Is Atheism Dead? is coming right back at that question with one of his own, Is Atheism Dead? The general outline of this book is that advances in science and archaeology point to the idea that there is indeed reason to believe that there is a God, that there is an uncreated creator, and that the whole belief system of atheism no longer has a leg to stand on. This book is broken up into three separate parts. The whole premise of part one, Does Science Point to God?, is based on the idea that the deeper that we get into the origins of the universe, the fine-tuning of the universe and the origins of life itself, it becomes sillier and sillier to believe that all of these things happened on their own and came out of absolutely nothing. The scientific portion of this book was the part that I enjoyed the most because I really love diving into these deep topics about the origin of the universe, the origin of life. He goes into the Big Bang and talks about how hesitant scientists were to agree that the Big Bang did happen and that all of our universe came out of absolutely nothing because it makes it very difficult to explain how something like that is even possible if there is not an uncreated creator. Where does everything come from if not nothing? How is that even possible? How is it possible for everything that we now know and see to come from absolutely nothing? And like I said, I'm not going to sit here and read the book to you. I'm not going to lay out all these arguments because that's work for you to do. I definitely encourage you to grab this book to dive in and see the arguments for yourself. Eric Metaxas goes on a deep dive into fine tuning and talks about how the laws of physics, the size of the earth, the size of the sun, the distance between the earth and the sun, the size of the moon, the distance between the earth and the moon, and on and on and on, how all of these things seem to point to a creator. Because if any of these numbers were off by just a tiny bit, then the existence of life would be seemingly impossible. And it's interesting that we just so happen to live in a universe where everything seems to have been perfectly put into place so that life can not only exist, but thrive. And then in part one, he goes into my favorite part and he starts talking about abiogenesis, a topic that I find to be absolutely fascinating. And abiogenesis is referring to how life comes out of non-life, um, something that we absolutely have never observed, cannot observe, 
Um, there are explanations out there for how the first cell was formed, and he goes very in depth about the current beliefs about abiogenesis and the flaws that they hold. Um, whenever you're reading a book like this, I strongly encourage you to do a little bit of your own research. You never know if an author is just biased or if they're pulling numbers right out of their butt, which is very possible. But while I was reading this book, I did do a little bit of research and even the atheists agree at the things that he's saying in here. They just come to a different conclusion with the data that they have. For something like abiogenesis, there is no data to back up that life comes from non-life. And one of the points that Eric Metaxas makes is that scientists have been desperately attempting to prove that life can come from non-life to no avail because they need it to be true. I always find it interesting that atheists bash Christians because they say that Christians start with the conclusion and work backwards. But is that not what scientists are doing? There's no evidence that shows us that life comes from non-life. It is simply necessary for it to be true. And when I say that there is no actual evidence or data that life comes from non-life, do the research yourself. You'll be surprised to see how little we know. There's a lot of speculation and there's a lot of theory, but nothing to actually back up what they're saying. All right, so that's part one of Is Atheism Dead? My favorite part of the book, and one of the reasons that I enjoyed it so much is that he doesn't just spew out data and scientific talking points. He actually tells a story as he does it. And I just feel like that makes it so much more easier to stay engaged and to stay tuned as you're reading the book. So now part two of Is Atheism Dead? The Stones Will Cry Out. Now this is all about archaeological discoveries that point to the Bible. Yep, that's part two. There you go. Let's move on. The world around us only more and more seems to back up the claims made in the Bible. He talks about different cities that were uncovered. For example, Sodom and Gomorrah. There's good evidence that we know the actual sites of Sodom and Gomorrah. And there's also evidence that shows that it was indeed destroyed from fire from above. Um, he goes in depth into how they show that that's what happened. This isn't just random speculation. They did a lot of tests on different artifacts to show that it was literally vaporized in an instant. I think that's super cool. And a lot of people for a long time made the arguments that the Bible is completely inaccurate. It's simply just old folk tales and mythology. But the more that we look at it and the more we keep literally digging in archeological sites, the more that we find things like proof for Pontius Pilate, the proof of King David, the proof of Jesus' hometown and his home where him, Joseph and Mary actually lived, we just keep finding more and more evidence that the Bible is pointing to real life places, real life people and real life events. If the Bible was a fairy tale, what we would expect is that the more digging that we do, we would come up with either nothing or contradictory evidence. And that simply is not the case. And that really sums up part two of Is Atheism Dead? It's very interesting if you enjoy archeology, span if you enjoy learning about history, Eric Metaxas does a great job giving the backstory of these archaeological discoveries he doesn't just say this was found in this date and time and then we realize that it means this he tells you all about the adventures that the archaeologists went on he tells you all about how these discoveries were made and different obstacles that were faced while they were making these discoveries and it definitely makes it much more bearable because for someone like me Archaeology is cool, but it doesn't really get me excited. But hearing the personal backstory and history to go along with it definitely made it much more entertaining. Now, part three is where Eric Metaxas really goes into the fact that in his view, atheism is dead. And here's why. And he starts off talking about the four horsemen of atheism. And what that's referring to is four public figures who are authors and public speakers and public debaters. And these are four people who are very passionate about preaching against Christianity. And the major point that he brings up when referring to these people is that generally, their arguments against Christianity, against religion as a whole, are more ideological than scientific. It seems that they're really just angry about the existence of religion. They put all religions into the same category, saying that they're all the same. They all yield the same terrible results, and they won't even look at the evidence. They seem to just close their eyes and ears to any evidence that would point to the existence of God. In their view, they need God to not exist. In reality, you can't prove whether or not God does or does not exist. 
You can't prove that anything does not exist. It's simply not possible. But still, they are certain and dogmatic that there is no God and that there only is the material world. He talks about how terrible it must be to believe that there is no intrinsic value, that humans have no value, that life has no meaning. He talks about the founding myth of atheism. This is something that Sam Harris brings up whenever he's arguing against Christianity, talking about how there was this great disaster where a bunch of Christians died. It made people sad and therefore God couldn't exist because bad things happen, which is a philosophical problem that Christians have addressed time and time again. I highly recommend that if you're struggling with that problem, that if you're wondering how a good God can exist in such a terrible world, that you read The Problem of Pain by C.S. Lewis. It is a fantastic book. And towards the last part of the book, he talks about how Christianity and science are truly compatible. He talks about different scientists that through their work, have come to belief in God. He talks about Christians who have made great scientific discoveries. And he talks about how one of the core tenets of Christian faith is the belief in truth, the exact opposite of relativism, where anything can mean whatever you want and there is no objective truth or value. And at the end of the book, Eric Metaxas talks about the meaning of meaning. And he's pretty much just arguing against the idea of nihilism, that there is no objective truth, there is no beauty, there is nothing of value other than the value that we give it. When you're reading this book, Eric Metaxas says that this isn't really a linear book. This is not a book that you need to start at the beginning and read all the way through to the end. This book has different talking points. It has different ideas. So if you wanted to read about archaeology first, go for it. You can really just open this book up right into the middle and just learn about different archaeological discoveries. Um, I read it from cover to cover because that's just the way I do things. I'm not the kind of person to jump around in a book. But if that's what you want to do, absolutely go for it. As I already said, my favorite portion was part one, where he was just talking about science and the origin of the universe, the fine tuning of the universe and abiogenesis. And if you're somebody that's interested in Christian apologetics, the defense of the Christian faith, if you're interested in certain things, like I said, the origin of the universe and why that points to a creator or the way that everything is. And the more that we look at the universe, the more that it points to a creator. If you're interested in archeological discoveries that show evidence for the events that happened in the Bible, if you're just looking to see what Eric Metaxas's thoughts on atheism are, this is a fantastic read. I have read some dense, boring books in the defense of Christianity. I think they're great, but this is not one of them. This is a book that has very great points. This is a book that I think argues Eric Metaxas's case very well, but he also does it in a manner that makes it easy to read. I think that anybody that wants to study Christian apologetics, whether you're just beginning or you've been doing it for years, this is a book for you. I challenge you to pick up this book and start reading and you won't be disappointed. And also, I challenge you, if you think that the Bible is absolute rubbish, if you think that there's no evidence for the existence of God in the universe, that this is also a great book to read. I know there are people out there that read books like this just so they can do YouTube videos to prove how everything about it is wrong. And you know what? Go ahead and do that. I'll be interested. You can put a link for your video down in the comments below, and I'd love to watch it and see your point of view. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have to say about this wonderful book. This book is, Is Atheism Dead by Eric Metaxas? Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that you're here, and I hope, like I've already said, that you've smashed that like button and that you're subscribing so that you can stay tuned for more videos. I look forward to talking about more books, but until then, I hope you have an absolutely fantastical, wonderful day. Have a great day, guys.